Hey friends, we're back sh sharpening the saw as everyone's seen from before I hit a rock on that, I think it was the first or second cut I made. That's kind of what you have to deal with when you're working with tree service wood. You just never know what you're going to run into. It's one downfall. So today on this so I'm going to be doing the triangle grind and the rakers also probably need to be hit. So I got a point zero thirty raker depth gauge and flat file and a couple brushes to clean the chain up. And I also have a scrunch here. So with these saws, when I'm sharpening, see how loose that is? The chain goes sideways a lot when you're sharpening like that. So I like to tighten them up a little bit. That way they're not moving all over the place. And then I'll loosen them back up once I'm done. I think that'll work. I will mark this with the pin just in case I lose track. And normally I'd have to clean these off whenever I cut a lot of tan oak and softwoods. This builds up right here and acts like a raker. So you want to make sure those are clean. Okay, chain breaks off. So this was kind of an experiment for me. I ran triangle grind for a, what, a little over a year on this saw. So what I found out is the triangle grind is really great, especially for softwood and clean wood. It cuts really great. I. Uh, I was watching Buck and Billy Ray's channel and I seen that he does a lot of flat filing and square grinds on his saws. So I wanted to try it out. Um, I did notice that you have to be real careful with the rakers because it'll make the wood chips really long and they'll get stuck inside the saw, especially if you're ripping. So you got to be careful with the rakers when you're doing the square grind or triangle grind. But I, honestly, I'm going to go back to just using... Um, the organ grinder the electric one it's just it's not quite that quality you can get out of hand fouling but it's so fast and if you're if you're cutting a lot of firewood especially in dirty wood you don't want to be wasting too much time cutting on or uh, sharpening that saw blade so okay i'm gonna i usually do about 10 licks if it's pretty dull so let's see where we're at it's about 12 licks so that was 12 licks and it still doesn't quite have it good it's not super aggressive I've been cutting a lot of dirty wood lately so okay now I'll move to this one okay let's take off about 14 likes off this one because that's what I did on the last one roughly Out. 
you guys can tell, but looks pretty good. Okay, let's get this next one. Yeah, about 14, 15 lakes or so. It's doing pretty good, so I'm gonna go with that. Just to get this thing back in check. Mark this one real quick. So we got one side. So with my smaller saws, I like just taking the chain off and grinding them on the grinder, but it's still kind of tedious and to take the chain off, especially if you're out in the woods. So I think I'm just going to go back to hand grinding because um, it's just, I guess if you had multiple saws, if you had three or four saws, that would make sense because you could just have a bunch of sharp saws and take, take with you to work and you'd be able to get throughout the day without putting a lick on it if you just swapped out your saw. But, uh, yeah, it just kind of seems like a pain in the butt to be messing with the chain. After I wear out this chain, I'm gonna go back to round file with the electric Dremel or uh, the organ. One of those electric ones. I have an Oregon one, it works pretty good. It's just, uh, it's 12 volts, so I had to have a battery nearby. So if you really want to get sharp, those last couple licks, go really lightly. Make sure you get all the burrs off it. And it gets super sharp. I was watching a couple of Buck and Billy Ray videos. Um, man, that 500i ripsaw he has, that thing seems like a monster. I'm gonna have to get me one of those someday. Seems like a great firewood saw. I didn't like the stock ones because they, they don't quite have that RPM to be bucking limbs out in the wood. You're gonna get a lot of kickbacks because they're not really whining out like the Huskies do. I really like the Huskies, but uh, yeah, they're just those 500 eyes. I like how they rev out really fast. I'm, I'm kind of curious how the fuel injection system holds up on them if you're running ethanol gas through them, which I'd hate to run through them, but I'm just, I'd be curious to test one. See how it holds up compared to the carburetors seem like they get messed up after about four or five years if you're running the uh, pump gas in them. Oh yeah, nice and sharp. And try to tap this. Tap your file so it doesn't get all plugged up. Uh, it'll be uh, pretty similar accuracy as well. You're trying to keep everything even. See if I can get in closer for you guys. Can't quite see it on the camera. It's not. Let me just 
just get real close, see if that works. Okay. Okay, so. See the angle right there. Well, that's what you're looking for. Okay, now we are going to hit the rakers. My flat files kind of milked, but it still work. I should use this. Now that I got a lick on all the chains even out my rakers here mark here oh, looks pretty good actually interesting This for my rakers, man. Maybe this thing was really dull. See, it looks good. See, it's not hitting. Let me start on the one that's. Yeah, it's not hitting. So this one might need to be hit a little bit. Oh, looks good. Looks good. This one needs at least two licks. Looks pretty. It's pretty close. So we get two light licks in there. Maybe a third. Perfect. Today we are going to be finishing up these rounds. Um, so I think it was this log right here, the first or second cut I cut into, hit a rock or something, so really gooped up my chain. So I hardly got by cutting these guys over here. Um, as you guys can see in that, uh, the footage before was pretty bad. I was shooting out sawdust over there. So hopefully I'm not shooting sawdust out now. We got the saw nice and sharp. I want to show you guys how um, I will roll this giant round down so I can get to the other side to cut it. Um, I've been cutting wood for since I was about eight years old and I'm 37 now. So yeah, you know, it's just a little bit of time for cutting wood, and uh, yeah, this is pretty pretty normal for me moving these logs around. So I'll show you how I do it. I try to do it the easiest way possible. So hopefully this will work out for you. And I 
kind of made these like cookies right here because I didn't want to waste the wood. I was going to have to cut them in some weird sizes. So I, I just made two cookies right here. Uh, they'll be easier to move around. It's not ideal, but um, I'll probably split those up for personal. They'll dry pretty quick since they're real short. Okay. <laughs> Hey friends, uh, since my space here is, you know, I don't have much space here, so I'm gonna, I like to keep my work area pretty clean, especially if I'm dealing with heavy logs like this. So I'm just gonna clean this up, roll this one down, clean it up, and we'll just do a couple at a time until I get a little more space and I can get a nice row in here. But as of for now, we have no space and it's a lot easier just to get this stuff out of my way. Otherwise, I'm going to be fighting with this log, tripping over that log, and uh, it'd be one thing if the, the rounds were really small, but obviously these are like 200 pound rounds, so alright, let's get into it.
fins that was a lot easier to uh just clean that up and now i've got all this space i work on this one it's not ideal to be doing this but if you don't have any space i think this way is a lot easier to try and bust them around get them around each other and uh getting the conveyor hooked up but i thought that the easiest way is just to use two hands and throw it off into the car but um yeah this works for now i'm gonna get the conveyor going here in a little bit all right that can do it
Hey friends, that saw definitely needs some help. I replaced the fuel lines uh, and the fuel filter with steel uh, parts and the grommets. And the filter's in there sideways, but for some reason it still acts like it's running out of gas every once in a while when it gets to about half a tank. Uh, and then sometimes it runs okay, and then sometimes it runs really rich. The low jet on that thing's... I think it's, uh, it's a little off. Um, it definitely could use a steel carburetor as well. Um, either that or I think if it wasn't piped out so much, like I got it piped out, um, it might run okay if you back it off a little bit. But I really like it when it revs quick and a little on the high side. So. Uh, yeah, definitely needs a carburetor from a steel as well. So definitely wouldn't recommend buying one of these saws unless you just don't have any money and you want to wrench on something all the time. All right, let's get into it.
This is what we got so far. As you can see, this nasty piece right there, that one that got stuck. That's all the burn out is personal. Here in a second, I am going to build a little fence with firewood in the back so I can build it up a little taller. So I can make enough space for that crotch right there, that nasty wood. I gotta get it out of my way because I have to pick up this wood over here behind me. I need to get this empty so I can clean this area out. All right, we're gonna get back into it. Years ago, I, uh, when I used to split wood by hand, I'd always use a maul because if you're uh, using an axe, uh, you have to be real careful. If you over swing, you can hit the dirt. And if you hit the dirt with your axe, man, put you out for a while until you can get it fixed or sharpen it again or muscle through it. So you always got to. Most of the time, if you got a power swing something, you got to put it on another piece of wood. So you got to bend over and pick up that piece of wood. But with the maul, I can just split it while it's on the dirt. So it doesn't matter if it hits the, if it hits a rock or something, like it just did. But it didn't even affect it. I like using the seven, eight pound mauls. The big mauls are great if you got a nasty round you need to pop open, but not for uh, doing regular production they will wear you out real quick all right well this round burned me out pretty good so i'm gonna get the splitter going and take a little break and then i'll get back to cutting again
Hopefully that'll give us enough space. Okay friends, we're about to wrap this project up here pretty soon. Uh, I gotta get a load of wood here and cameras are running out of space and batteries. So I won't be able to get that, but uh, I'm gonna do a time lapse of me doing a little cleanup here. So, alrighty, I really hope you enjoy the content. Let's get into it. Hey friends, alrighty, we wrapped it up today. We got all of this area clean of bark. Now I can pull my trailer back here and not get a flat tire, so that's great. Man, while I was moving all that bark, I was really thinking about that dug fur. That thing was pretty nasty. I don't know, it might have been two or three years since I've cut around like that of dug fur. It is softwood, but you can see those dots are still 
really hard to cut into. So I was wondering uh, what the viewers think. If you can comment down below if you'd rather see perfect wood, straight grain, cut, split, or do you like these kind of videos where I'm trying to cut through this knotty wood that's not really worth it, but if I can get it down to uh, a smaller size, it will dry, so it's better than wasting it. But most of the time, it's honestly not worth it, especially if you don't have the right machinery to deal with it. It's you're probably nine times out of ten will just throw it in the burn fire or the broiler or something if you're back east. Well, appreciate everybody for tuning in. If you could please hit that like, subscribe, share, and the bell icon, I sure would appreciate it. It really helps out the channel. Alright, we'll see you in the next one.